I'm gonna go through really quickly the 10 different things. But what I want you to do is be able to memorize these 10 things. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through, and I'm gonna teach you this very quickly, um, a way of putting it onto your body. And we're gonna put it onto your body just for, for ease. So I'm gonna give you the 10 keys to having an ageless mind. Every single one of them, you've either heard me say or you intuitively know that these are important. That's not the reason I'm saying it. The reason I'm saying it is to take knowledge and turn it into power. And I want you to take those ideas and have them have real impact. And what I want you to do is when I'm going through it, I want you to cycle through and on a piece of paper, rate yourself on a scale of zero to 10, how well am I doing in that category? One third of your memory is predetermined by genetics and biology. Let's say two thirds in your control. These are the 10 things I would focus on. So the first one is a good brain diet. Good brain diet. So on a scale of zero to 10, what's an honest assessment? If you're honest and true to yourself, where are you on your diet? So we talk about the, the most important foods for your brain that are neurological, like protecting, you know, neuroprotective. So we're talking about avocados, we're talking about blueberries, or what I call brain berries, right? We're talking about broccoli, we're talking about eggs, if you, that's allowed to buy your diet. We're talking about coconut oil or olive oil. We're talking about green leafy dark vegetables, wild salmon, if you're allowed to, if you, that's part of your, your, your diet also as, as well. Turmeric, I do every morning, I do like an almond turmeric like tea, right? All these things are neuroprotective. Number two, killing ants, automatic negative thoughts. How well are you controlling your self-talk? On a scale of zero to 10, honestly, even if you've done this with me, how strong are you? Zero to 10. Do your thoughts make a difference? Yes or yes? If I say constantly I'm getting too old, is that gonna be self-fulfilling? Yes or yes? If I say I'm forgetful, I have a bad memory. If you fight for your limitations, you get to keep them. So your mind is always eavesdropping on your self-talk. That's number two. Number three, exercise. And really what we're talking about here is movement. Your, the number one function of your brain is to control your movement, right? That's why we know there's not just a brain-body connection, but a body-brain connection, that using your body in different ways stimulates neurogenesis, it stimulates neuroplasticity, it stimulates brain-derived nootropic factors, which is the fertilizer for making new connections. So you have to move, but we live in a very sedentary life. Right? I was reading this book talking about barefoot kids and how we're taking away seesaws and sprint, you know, swings and all these things. We're overprotecting them and then we're keeping them in a very sterile environment. They're not moving as much, right? They're always on their devices and they're not getting the brain growth, right? And it's leading to learning challenges and so on. But how much are you moving every single day? They say, they say sitting is a new smoking, right? You do not want to sit eight hours a day and just, and just study. I'm gonna go through the rest fast. Number four, brain nutrients. Brain vitamins, because we're at a, you know we're traveling. We're not able to eat the best foods ever. Are you supplementing with? Food? There are certain nutrients, and I would just have. I would make this a no-brainer. I would just go to your functional medicine doctor and get like hormonal tests, full spectrum tests, food sensitivity, and just see what your baseline is. Because I really do believe people are bio individual. Like, and I've I've seen all the research, talked to so many individuals. Find out what works for you. Because if you're the most important supplement is DHA for the brain. DHA. All right, that's number four. Number five, positive peer group. So rate yourself, zero to 10. How inspired, encouraged, challenged, energized are you by your peer group? And again, peer is choice. I'm not talking about your family, although they maybe are your peer, but the people that you choose, right? So either get new group or choose who you're gonna let affect you, positive peer group, because it really affects your, your brain, zero to 10. Really fast, number six, clean environment. How clean is your environment? How organized is six, zero to 10? And you know this, right? Is your external world reflected by your internal world and vice versa? Because it's a feedback loop. If you ever cleaned your room, clean your desktop, clean your work area, and all of a sudden you have clarity of thought? The reason why I brought up the, the boxing match is this, is because I go over there, we watch this fight, and afterwards I was like, you know, I was me sitting here, Sylvester Stallone on the couch here, and then to his left was Arnold Schwarzenegger. And I swear, if you took a picture of that, like, they'd be like, who photoshopped that Asian dude in that, in that photo? <laughs> but I was like, what does it take to be a champion like those guys? And then Arnold said, Jim, the difference between an amateur and a champion is a champion's willing to push past the pain period. Just like for those of you who did the exercise over the past few days, it's that intensity. 
and getting and is there a pain period in a relationship is there a pain period sometimes in the health crisis is there a pain period also in your business multiple pain periods right the ability to push past that's where the period is now because you've just in days and days and you're and you feel like your attention is wandering and going different places this is the time when it counts just like with your workout right so if lorenzo and his team's here that would be that would be the goal so that's number that's number six number seven sleep on a scale of zero to ten how good is your sleep it's important for your brain three really simple reasons it's where you consolidate short to long-term memory. That's where you actually remember. You do not, even when you're doing these workouts, build your muscles when you're working out. You build it when you rest. Same thing with your mental muscles, same thing with your memory. So that's where you consolidate short to long-term memory. The other reason why you sleep is it cleans plaque out that could lead to dementia and potentially brain aging challenges. The last reason why is how you dream, right? Your REM sleep, your REM, your REM stages of your sleep, that's very important because that's where your, your creativity, that's where I'm telling you, like we did a whole thing on super brain on how to remember your dreams. But specifically, why do you want to remember your dreams? Because you learn all day, your brain doesn't shut off at night, it's, it's more active at night. And so Elias Howe created a sewing machine in his dream. You know, Paul McCartney came out with the song yesterday in his dream. Mary Shelley came up with Frankenstein in his dream. Periodic Table came to a chemist in his dream. What are you dreaming about at night that could solve a lot of the problems in your business, in your life, but you forget it the next morning? That's why the first thing I do in my morning routine is remember my dreams. And six steps on how to do that, we, we talked about in, in Super Brain. After that, sleep, eight, brain protection. Are you protecting your brain? And I'm not just talking about, about wearing a helmet in extreme sports. Yes, that's obvious. I've had a series of you know, traumatic brain injuries and concussions and all those challenges. Yes, but I mean like things like EMFs. Like we did a podcast episode specifically talking about um, electromagnetic fields and how it's affecting the brain. Is that affecting the brain, do you think? Do you think it's normal? Do you think we evolved or are born to be able to be able to handle all the electricity that's coming out of these smart devices? You know, I read recently that over 90% of kids sleep with their phones underneath their pillows, right? Not on airplane mode, right? So it's it's big, big, big challenge. We just did two videos on that. They have 4 million views in just a matter of weeks. You should watch, watch those videos. EMFs protect your brain. Number nine, new learnings. New learnings? Meaning that you might have seen the longevity, this is a longevity conference, on the cover of Time Magazine where the, was this a study on nuns who were living 80, 90 and above. What was the secret to their longevity? First part, part of it was their emotional faith, gratitude. The other half, lifelong learners. These group of women were just learning every day, reading every day, having deep conversations, doing the work every single day. It added years to their life and life to their years. So always learning, and I'm preaching to the choir here. But I, I know for a fact, most of you could actually push it even more, all right? That's how you create neurogenesis and neuroplasticity. If you wanna know the secret to, to having an ageless mind, neurogenesis says you could create new brain cells the day you die. Neuroplasticity is saying you could create new connections the day you die. The two most important factors outside of sleep that's gonna promote neurogenesis and neuroplasticity, novelty and nutrition. Just like your body, you have to give it novelty or stimulus, and you have to give it nutrition and feed that muscle. Does that make sense? Same thing with your mental muscles. So novelty of movement, novelty of ideas. But most people, as we grow older, and I, I mean chronological age, we shut down because we feel like we know everything, right? So there's no novelty that's there. There's a Rumi quote that says, sell your cleverness for bewilderment. Like, when's the last time you felt bewildered? Remember, you don't have creativity or have focus or have a memory or have bewilderment or have love or have motivation or have energy. You do those things. You do energy, you do creativity, you do focus, you do bewilderment. So we're taking nouns, turning them to verbs, and we're taking a structure, a process, a strategy on how you can replicate that at will. And finally, the last thing, number 10, stress management. And this is the invisible one, right? Nobody wants to talk about, but you're under, a, how many people didn't realize how much stress they were under until they were like hanging out here on the beach? Because, because it's like fish, they don't see the water because it's there all the time. But we are under so much environmental stress, pollutants, environmental stress, emotional stress, work stress, cognitive stress, financial stress, and we don't realize that. But you don't get the best of the best out of that, right? It's good for fight or flight, sympathetic mode, but when you want to go, when you want to be able, it's not good if you need to think. If you're stressed, it doesn't help you study. When you're stressed, it doesn't help you give a presentation. When you're stressed, it doesn't help you perform cognitively because it shuts down cortisol, adrenaline, big parts of your brain. So stress management. So how are you managing your stress?